The Miami Dolphins offseason has been interesting. It is clear that Miami is a big market, as the Dolphins have been the topic of discussion for most of the offseason. It all started with the Deshaun Watson trade rumors. Miami was rumored to want Watson via trade and move on from starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa in the process. Tungavailoa was the number 5 pick in the 2020 NFL Draft and was 6-3 as a starter last season, so the idea of trading for Watson instead of building around Tungavailoa was an everyday debate. After months of arguments, Miami is clearly moving on with Tungavailoa, and the reason is because Watson has a legal situation that is likely not going to be resolved as we head into the 2021 NFL season. Instead, we will think about what could have happened had Watson not had legal issues. It is worth noting that Miami was aggressive with trades during this offseason. The Dolphins traded for linebacker Benardrick McKinney, who will surely play a big role on their defense. Miami gave up edge defender Shaq Lawson in the process, but the move was well received by the fan base. The Dolphins also traded for 2020 first round pick Isaiah Wilson, but this did not work out very well. Miami has already cut ties with Wilson and he is well on his way to becoming one of the biggest busts in NFL history. With the trades in mind, Miami still has some holes on their roster and some moves they can make. As we get closer to the 2021 NFL Draft, here are five creative trades the Dolphins could make before the draft. 5. The Miami Dolphins trade cornerback Xavier Howard to the Dallas Cowboys for pick 10. Before I dive into this, I want to say that I think Xavier Howard is one of the best cornerbacks in the entire NFL, and he was in the DPOY voting for a reason. Cornerbacks like Howard are not easy to find, so even getting the number 10 overall pick does not guarantee you will replace him. However, it's a good start, and if you can get the number 10 overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft for Howard, it would be hard to say no. Reason from Finside the NFL first put this idea in my head, and I was not for it. It's hard to get 10 interceptions, but will Howard ever be as good, and will his value ever be as high? Probably not, which makes me revert back to how head coach Brian Flores does things. He tries his best to put his own spin on things, but he's very Patriot way, regardless. It would be the Patriot way to get rid of Howard a year before he starts to decline. It actually makes a lot of sense when you really break it down for Miami then too. It would allow Miami to likely get one of the top two cornerbacks in the draft, who will be younger and cheaper. Yes, he isn't going to be an all-pro in year one, but it's honestly a risk worth taking. Miami would save $9.3 million on the cap by making this move, according to Spatrak. They would also get rid of his massive contract over the next three seasons. Sometimes it's hard to move on from certain players, but for pick 10, Miami would be wise to do it. 4. The Miami Dolphins trade pick 81 and wide receiver Albert Wilson to the Washington football team for safety Landon Collins. Xavier Howard was mentioned as a potential player to be traded this offseason by Spatrak a few days ago, but another interesting name on that list was Washington football team safety Landon Collins. Collins is coming off season ending Achilles surgery, so his medicals will need to check out before anything happens. However, it's the NFL. He will be just fine after getting surgery and rehabbing with the best medical professionals in the world. Let's talk about the player now. Collins is a former first-team All-Pro and three-time Pro Bowl safety. The talent is there, but his time in Washington hasn't been going as planned. Collins signed a monster contract before the 2019 season but has not lived up to that contract. I blame Washington's defense a ton. And I think if Collins can get in a scheme that will make the most out of his abilities, he will thrive for the next few years to end his career. That's why Miami should be calling. Washington has young players who played well last year behind Collins, so they are 100% on board moving on from him. I've even seen reports that Collins could be a surprise cut, so it makes sense for Miami to see what it would cost. Giving up pick 156 and wide receiver Albert Wilson would be good with me. I could see them wanting pick 81, and I would even strongly consider doing that. If Miami would add Collins to their defense for that price, they will be even better and still be able to improve their offense with the top 5 selections within the first 81 picks. Collins would have to adjust his contract a little for Miami, but he's only 27, and he's still got some good football in his future. 3. 
The Miami Dolphins trade guard Eric Flowers in pick 231 to the Seattle Seahawks for Rashad Penny in pick 129. This is as creative as they come regarding trades, in my opinion. The Miami Dolphins decided the former first-round pick Eric Flowers was worth a monster contract in free agency and found out quickly he was not. I personally do not think Flowers was as bad as many others do, but he wasn't worth the money they are paying him, and they have players on the roster that will be better than him. I think Solomon Kindley has a bright future at left guard in the NFL, and I think he would beat Flowers in a position battle this offseason. But I don't think the Dolphins should let it get to that, and instead, they should get rid of Flowers' awful contract and pick up a starting running back in the process. Before you tell me Seattle Seahawks running back Rashad Penny is injury-prone, let me tell you that Penny has gone from playing 14 games to 10 games to only playing in 3 games in 2020. So, yes, I know there is some concern there, but that is why Miami also gets pick 129 in this deal. They do give up pick 231, but that's not even worth thinking about. Miami should do this because it gives them a potential starting running back if he can stay healthy with an incredible contract. If Penny stays healthy and shows why the Seahawks selected him in the first round, Miami can exercise his fifth-year option and only pay him $4.5 million in 2022. That means they can get a starting running back for two years, and about $6.5 million, or about $3.25 million a year. That seems like a bargain general manager Chris Greer would like, and that's not even accounting for getting rid of flowers and saving $8 million in cap space. Saving money. Adding a potential starting running back, and getting pick 129 makes this deal a no-brainer in my eyes. 2. The Miami Dolphins trade pick 81 to the Cleveland Browns for running back Kareem Hunt. This trade is the popular Dolphins Twitter trade, but it makes sense. Miami badly needs a starting running back, and I think trading for Cleveland Browns running back Kareem Hunt would be an incredible move. Miami should not take a running back at pick 18, mainly because there are no elite running backs in this draft class. If they were going to take a running back, I would rather them wait until the second round, pick 36 and try to get the number one running back in the 2021 NFL Draft, Travis Etienne. The former Clemson star would be the perfect fit in Miami's offense, especially with his pass-catching ability out of the backfield. That is why I love the idea of trading for Hunt. He would immediately become the RB1, and you would rarely take him off the field. Malcolm Brown and Miles Gaskin would be great number two and number three options behind him to come in and spell him when he needed a break, but this would be Hunt's show. I do not know if Cleveland would trade Hunt, but they do have Pro Bowl running back Nick Chubb as well. So maybe the idea of adding pick 81 would entice them to make the move. It would be a no-brainer for Miami, as adding a starting running back they can trust with the 81st overall pick would be the best case scenario. They would have pick 6, pick 18, pick 36, and pick 50 to build up their roster even more. This trade seems more like a dream scenario than a creative one, but it's one Miami should pursue. 1. The Miami Dolphins trade pick 156 and Jakeem Grant to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for running back Ronald Jones. This is another one of my favorite creative trades in this article, and just like the trade to Seattle, the reasoning behind it all makes it fun and possible. Let's start with Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back Ronald Jones. Even if Tampa would tell you they trust him or want him, they are lying to you. Please don't listen to their words, but instead, watch what they are doing. Tampa Bay drafted Jones in the second round of the 2018 NFL Draft. His rookie season was a disaster, but he improved in year two. Year three, he broke out, rushing for 978 yards and seven touchdowns in 2020. He averaged a career-high 5.1 yards per carry, and he did this all in only 14 games. You would think that would make the team happy, but Tampa Bay has re-signed Leonard Fournette, Lombardi Lenny. They also signed free agent running back Giovanni Bernard this offseason. Along with that, they drafted Kayshawn Vaughn in the third round of the 2020 NFL Draft. The writing is on the wall that someone needs to leave, and it only makes sense for it to be Jones. That is why Miami needs to get creative and make a move for him. Adding Jones to Miami's offense would be awesome, and they'd have a bell cow type running back fans have wanted. Jones is only 23 years old too, so if the trade would work, they could have him for a solid four years. 
they give up pick 156 in this trade, and they save about $2.6 million by getting rid of wide receiver Jakeem Grant. Tampa Bay would love another weapon, and Grant would give them value on special teams too. Miami should 100% check in with Tampa Bay to see what Ronald Jones would cost them because adding him would be huge for the Dolphins' offense.